Melanie is what is it 2010 or is it ten, is it 2010? 2010? I don't know. Leo Laporte was saying to say 2010, not, not 2010. Hi, this is Pox. I'm down here at CES for 2010. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go around and take a look at all the cool little gadgets that are here, the weird little technologies that are in the corner booths that aren't normally featured on all the bigger programs. Really weird stuff. Check it out. Wireless power, it was everywhere. Everybody seemed to be doing it, but this was one of the coolest demonstrations where they had it embedded in a table and they had little LEDs in a floating tub. <laughs> and as you pull them away, they'd fade. Uh, Finn was in all the LED backlit display screens. Uh, they were getting them so thin that you look at them from the side and they just flat out disappear, which is crazy. And of course, 3D. Now, this is one of the 3D TVs that did not require glasses. Um, it only worked if you were about 10 feet away and staring directly at it. But it did work. It wasn't too clear, though. Uh, this was one of the weird displays. Yeah, the bezels totally screwed up the 3D. It looked like they were being pushed through some kind of a weird mesh. And uh, everybody and their brother decided to go all out with their displays. They decided, uh, well, let's see how many TVs we can fit in one booth. <laughs> But they did some really cool things with how they'd synchronize the displays. It was almost like a form of art. I would call it art. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and Samsung, they, they, they're just crazy. They have this, like, cavern. It's like you're in Oz or, like, Wonderland or something. It's dizzying. <laughs> All the displays and the mirrors. It's so Panasonic, they're going all out with a 3D camera. They're twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, so they're made to order. So. You have to be special, I suppose, and get one made for you. And they won't be out until uh, later in the fall. Pretty, pretty interesting little um, little camera. It's little, it's tiny, as opposed to the Sony rig that was kind of custom made. This thing is huge. It's using the EX3 cameras. That's what we shoot uh, our show on sometimes. Is one EX3? Yeah. I did a 3D test and it wasn't that complex. <laughs> uh, oh, and, and delivery. What good is, you know, the 3D cameras without content? DirecTV is going to be having an all 3D channel. Uh, that now they're already going into high, ultra high definition. So they're showing off some 4K televisions. They look pretty sharp on really big screens. And of course, Panasonic uh, wouldn't be showing off 3D if they weren't showing off Avatar. And video conferencing. Uh, that was another trend that seemed to be happening. Looked like LG was doing Skype in their TVs. And uh, V-Phone is doing it over your uh, Android phone network. There's video. Or internet video built into the TVs. And they even had the 3D TV without glasses uh, out the main halls for CES so that you could find your way around CES this was just kind of a cool little trick uh, you can put any object in there and make it look like it's got a 3D screen popping out of it these are some of the more uh, stranger booths that I'm going to show you here the non-conventional stuff and of course the walking booths <laughs> And th th that was a cool technology right there. That's where you can turn a button and it'll make the display darker. So you could have a, a window and then press a button and it'll become like a projector screen. And this MakerBot is just awesome. You just feed it uh, ABS plastic and it'll literally print out any 3D object that you throw at it. And this is the drone. Now this is a cool, they call it an augmented reality game, real life game thing. But uh, you can fly it around with your iPhone, iPod, and it 
sends video back to it. It's a pretty cool little object. And of course, Boxy, which I love. You should you should check out the video on their homepage. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Melody with Boxy and we are here at the D-Link booth at CES 2010. So what's new with Boxy is that we've finally thrown our software on a new D-Link box. They were nice enough to make us a really cool little box. You should check out the design if you haven't yet. And uh, the guts we've got inside there, the new NVIDIA uh, Integra 2 chipset and uh, a nice D-Link made box. And of course we've got our new Boxy Beta software, it's running on that. It's available on your Mac, PC or your Linux box. So uh, load it up wherever you want, and uh, you're going to see our um, D-Link box hit uh, about summer 2010, so look out for it. And if you really like our remote, you can check that out as well. We've got a full QWERTY keyboard on the back. We'll be selling that alone as well, so if you have your own Boxy box, you can buy your own remote as well. Thanks, Box. There are a few celebrities over at CES. Uh, got an autograph of Stan Lee and a picture with uh, Drew Carey. If you've got your business card with you, drop it into one of our CNET buckets. <laughs> oh, I hope I hope they do. Yeah, 50 bucks to save if you know the tricky part. It's got XLR inputs. So, in the Sony booth, they were showing off uh, their new cameras. Oh, great. They had a, con a, a more of a prosumer grade camera. It's kind of like the cameras we use, but uses cheaper memory. It uses uh, just. SD cards or nice. Sony memory stick. Full 1080p. They had the XL ja or jacks for audio. This was a cool device. You'd pop, pop a certain model of um, Sony camera into it, and it's a party mode where it automatically goes around and takes pictures of people when they're smiling and making funny faces and stuff. And they were showing off a lot of unreleased um, PS3 games. This one is pretty neat. They got the little uh, little critters. It's kind of like a Nintendogs type of thing, but it uses the camera. You can draw pictures for it. Uh, one of the demonstrations I saw at a blogger party, the guy drew a airplane, and it turned into a 3D object, and the little critter drop, jumped on it, and he flew around, and he could steer it with the Six access. In this case, he drew a little puppet and it turns into a little marionette. That magic card, you can also make it like a shower head and you can give the little pet a bath, and it's a pretty good use of object tracking. They're showing off the uh, vaporware that is Gran Turismo 5. <laughs> Seems like th it's never going to come out. And uh, Heavy Rain. If you remember a year or two ago, they came out with a really awesome video of how they're doing the motion capture for this game. It It's getting close to what they showed, but it's not quite as good as what they had showed at the time. Exactly. Apparently you weren't supposed to be videotaping this because they had me stop pretty quick. There. <laughs> and this owl is pretty cool because you can use your iPhone 3GS and you just pop it in there and shoot higher quality video. The cool things that I've seen. So what's the, you know what the retail on this is going to be? Yeah, we've been selling them since October. Uh, oh, they're one twenty nine ninety five. They're available right now through our personal website and oh, through okay. uh, thinkgeek.com. But oh. you should see it in the Apple store in the next few months. We were really? at Apple headquarters back in November. Wow. We just didn't have time to get a booth. We started the company in August, so it wasn't time to get a booth for CES this year. Huh. That's amazing. Huh. And so you can just put, uh, uh, you've got, uh, do you have a telephoto lens too that you can get or not? We actually were the first people to ever do a telephoto lens on a, uh, uh, like a real optical zoom telephoto lens on an iPhone. Um, TechCrunch huh. did an article about us back uh, in November. Oh, um, because of that, but yeah, and we're working on developing that, and making that a uh, actual consumer piece. Right now, it's extremely prototype. We didn't even bring it with us because huh. we didn't want people to see how hideous it looks. Huh. We actually bondo optics together. It's not the most beautiful thing. Huh. 
well, we got plans for this. There's a plastic Bondo model that should be coming out in the next uh, couple of months. Yeah. It'll be about half the price, $60, $70 price range. And then we're hoping for the first part of 2000, uh, or the last part of 2010, early 2011, to have a fully integrated model that works with uh, firmware. So you can do all sorts of stuff and have huh. zoom buttons and. Nice. Yeah. Maybe even Flash, which has been a big complaint about the iPhone. Huh. Great. So, awesome. Microsoft spared no expense in making this interactive display where you'd press the panels and it would play different music and lights on all the different panels. Don't know if it really served any purpose, but it was cool. This was a pretty neat car. They had uh, rigged it up so that it could s have night vision. So this little TV would pop up at night and you could see well beyond what your headlights could see. So you could see deer or, or antelope or whatever. And no CS shows complete without the robots. Apparently they are uh, re-releasing the Pleo and they're making it more interactive. Upgraded it. Uh, and these guys make a powered skateboard, which is just crazy. I should have seen when I lifted it up, it had a huge battery underneath of it. Uh, of course, there's a fake 3D screens that you can play or put over the PSP or your TV. And these are pretty cool. These gloves uh, are basically keyboard replacements, so you can do all your keyboard shortcuts with a glove. And they were saying you go way faster than with the keyboard. And uh, the Chevy Volt. If you haven't heard about this car, it's unique. It's a backwards hybrid. It's an electric car with a gas generator to recharge the battery. So there's no real gas engine drivetrain. It's, it's all electric. They're going to make about 8,000 of these vehicles the end of the year and then they're talking about like 70,000 next year. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.